Welcome, Ulle Damago, to White TV. Thank you so much. It's a great honor that we uh, may uh, make an interview with you. Uh, you got uh, known uh, by your research on the Palmer murder, the uh, Sweden 86, and um, we now today meet because uh, it is 10 years ago that the Swedish Secretary of State Anna Lind got murdered in Sweden also uh, and uh, I have got a lot of hints from the secret service and uh, reliable Swedish journalists that Anna Lind actually was the daughter of Olaf Palmer and uh, that she uh, uh, acted in that way also because uh, she held a very uh, interesting speech when Palmer was murdered uh, uh, in the funeral and said you can kill a person but you can't kill an idea and Olaf Palmer's idea was to contribute to world peace and she also did that by being very critical against Israel and uh, I, I asked you uh, for this interview because we, we share a lot of opinions about what happened uh, with, uh, in connection with the murder of Anna Lind. Yes, true. I think both of us are very convinced that uh, what happened that night, or that day, was not uh, just uh, the murder, uh, the action of a, a lone assassin, a lone crazy guy, but that there was actually something much, much bigger and much darker, sinister behind the whole, the whole thing. Yes. And and uh, for those who don't know so much about Swedish politics. Uh, uh, the Swedes were about to vote should they join the Euro or not. Sweden is in the European Union since 95, but um, uh, the question was should they even join the Euro. And uh, th there were a lot of uh, um, 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 opinions uh, that, that um, also the, the, the part being against the Euro were stronger. And Anna Lind was the icon for those who promoted the euro. Yeah, that's very true. And I think it's uh, important to to look at this murder from a higher point uh, of view, to with a wider perspective, because it's first when you see this on an international level that you start seeing a very clear pattern between many of these uh, different assassinations, how they're done, when they're done, and where as well. And just like you say, uh, Sweden went into the European Union in 1995, but at that time, Sweden was very much against that as well, until George Soros attacked the Swedish... Uh, uh, kind of, Crown, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly, the Swedish Krona. And after that, it really scared uh, the Swedish population, and boom, in they went. Mm -hmm. uh, in Denmark, Sweden, Denmark was a lot more... Uh, resistant than, than the Swedes and they voted no and what happened in Denmark they just arranged for a new election yeah. and uh, one one source that I spoke to he said we were just we had to, we were just going to continue having elections until they chose they decided for a yes and this is the way they do it if they can't force you they make new elections or they try to get to you emotionally Yes. And I think this is what happened with Anna Lind. It was uh, just a few days before the election and she was uh, someone that was a symbol for, for the Euro. She was totally for, for Sweden to join. Mm -hmm. And uh, like uh, when the Swedish population was still against it, what, what they did was that they, they hit this person to get the population to vote with emotions instead of their intellect. Yes, and uh, this is also what happened after she died. Uh, the votes went up uh, to I think a lot more than before. Yeah. Still, Sweden never voted in. Yes, and it's very important also to see on an international level that this is exactly what happened in in Madrid uh, with the uh, Madrid bombings, where there were ten bombs that exploded uh, on four different trains and killing. I think it was 191 people with almost 2,000 wounded. That was also just a few days before the election, very mm -hmm. similar. Mm -hmm. And also in, in Holland uh, the year after where 
where Pete de Fontaine was uh, murdered also just three days before the election. A politician and, on, on, the, on the right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then what happened after the elections uh, is that these countries go very right-wing, every single one of them go in a right-wing direction after mm -hmm. these assassinations. Yes. And um, in Sweden it was so that this um, uh, Secretary of State, Anna Lind, she was the prospect for the next prime minister from the head of, of, of the uh, government. And um, uh, she was very popular and uh, prepared for a TV show where the Euro uh, participation should be discussed and was in a storehouse in central Stockholm, Nudiska um, Kompaniet. Uh, And there she was attacked by at least one man who uh, had a knife with him and, and uh, uh, stuck the knife in, I think it was the liver. And she was stabbed, she was stabbed several times. Yes, uh, several times. And it must be a very skilled person because the injuries he inflicted were very severe. And, uh, and then she put, they put her to the hospital. And in the beginning they said, we will save her. And then in, in the morning they said, uh, we, we did not succeed, she has died. And uh, later on uh, uh, they said it was a lonely nut, uh, Mikhailo Mikhailovich, who killed her. And uh, uh, we both are of the opinion it, it was not a lonely nut. It is, once again, if you look at this on an international uh, arena, you will see that these uh, assassinations, they happen in a very similar uh, way. And one of the things that is always present is a patsy, a lone crazy guy that is yeah. uh, being blamed for this. Yeah. And uh, it's always he's alone because uh, if there's more than one person, then it's by law, it's, it would be just as a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, you need to look into the reason behind it. If he was alone and crazy, then he was just crazy. He stabbed him, he shot him, whatever. And you don't have to look into it. Case closed, boom, close, close the coffin, put him away to rot and just move on. Yes, yes. And the interesting uh, thing was with Mikhailovich uh, that he uh, claimed to hear voices in his skull uh, since early childhood. And he said, when I was in that storehouse and saw Anna Lind, I uh, got voices who said, uh, kill her, kill her. And uh, he said also that Jesus demanded her to kill her. And uh, this is for anybody who is skilled in mind control technologies, uh, an alarming sign. For sure. It's like, this is also one, once again, if you go on an international level, to see this, this is a, a thing that returns again and again, where... They, they use these uh, patsies and sometimes they, they are, like you say, they've gone through the MK Ultra program where they've been under, they've been put through very, very awful situations where uh, torture and different things that have uh, um, managed to split up their personality yes. into one or several. Yes. And by compartmentalize the personality, they're, they're able to keep them apart so that the different personalities do not know what the other one did. Yes. And in this way they can uh, use a person, they can trigger him mm -hmm. uh, as what is called a Manchurian candidate. Yes. Uh, they can trigger him into do things and him not having any memory of it afterwards or the other way around that he's being used as a patsy, he's not the one that, that is actually doing the killing because they don't really, they don't trust his skills as a killer, yes. so they use, they use professional assassins, but then they blame it on this guy. And after the assassination is done, he's triggered uh, by certain keywords, and after that, he, it's just like a, a tape recorder that starts, he will repeat the same story again and again and again. Mm. But often they have no memory of the, of the event itself. Mm -hmm. It's yes. totally blank. It was the case with Sirhan Sirhan, with Robert Kennedy. Yes. Who, he, was, he was standing in front of Kennedy. He was shooting, that is true. He was shooting with a gun that had eight bullets, but there was at least 13 bullets uh, or shots fired. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you don't have to be very clever to understand that something very weird is going on. Yeah. Plus that Kennedy was shot uh, 
three times from behind and to the right uh, at point blank. Uh, point. So here is a very clear case that he, he took the fall for something, that there was a conspiracy, and this Sirhan Sinan. Same with Mark Chapman, with mm -hmm. John Lennon. He yeah. was standing to the right of Lennon, and the shots were fired from the left. And if you look at who was standing to the left that evening, uh, the real killer uh, had worked extra that evening, or he was uh, disguised as a doorman. His real name is Jose Perdomo, mm -hmm. and he, he was part of an uh, assassination team that was put together uh, even before the Kennedy assassination and has been used in many, many assassinations ever since, uh, since that. Yes, and they say that, that uh, John F. Kennedy's m uh, alleged murder um, also uh, should have been treated uh, with mind control programs. Lee Harvey Oswald. I've never seen any proof of that, and I don't think so either. But mm. uh, it, the Kennedy assassination is a massive conspiracy. Yeah. And as far as I know, I've been able to track down and name all the different shooters. There were nine shooters mm. and spotters and their positions and how they got in and out and who paid and so on. So it, it's, but that has taken me almost 30 years. So it's, yeah. it's, it is a very complex thing. Yes, and, and in the case of Anna Lind, the Swedish Secretary of State, uh, which was murdered uh, or, or stepped down the 10th of September 2003 and the day later dead, uh, I suspect Mossad have done it because uh, in her struggle to uh, help uh, the world to get peace, uh, she was very critical against Israel and the policy uh, that Israel is making with the occupation. And she demanded that Israel should withdraw from the occupied territories. And uh, she was against the Iraq war and said, uh, no country has the right to act without the United Nations authorization and things like that. When they hit someone like this, uh, I think it has at least three different function, uh, functions. It's one, to get the emotional reaction from, from uh, the public yeah. so that they can move forward with their agenda. Yeah. The second one is to inflict fear in other people who might stand up and become whistleblowers or whatever. Yeah. Uh, this is also why these assassinations is followed by almost like a conspiracy of silence. You can see that yes. after the Palmer assassination, Estonia, all of these, there's this silence from, from official... Uh, and mass media. It's, it's mm -hmm. very clear that something strange happened. Mm -hmm. From an official point of view, people will never stand up and say anything. And that is the fear you inflict. That is one of the reasons, I think, why they do these crimes in an open street, in an open place. Yeah. Uh, it's just like with J.F. Kennedy, they did it right in the middle of the day in front of all of these people, in front of cameras, everything, just to say to everyone, we can get anyone, anywhere, at any time, so you back yes. off. And this is, uh, this is the fear they inflict with it. Yes. And the third, the third reason is also they often pick a person that they have a problem with anyway, and I think that you just described why she was a problem for them. Yes, and, and the ambassador from Israel in Stockholm, Zvi Marcel, officially called Anna Lind an anti-Semite, which he of course not was. But and it's it's a uh, this whole thing with the with Jews and Zionists, uh, it's a very tricky thing because uh, I, I shouldn't really go into it now. But it, it is they they often accuse people to stand up, people who stand up for human rights to be anti-Semites yes. when they, when they criticize Israel and it has absolutely nothing to do with race or religion, it's exactly. about human rights. Yes, and politics, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, so, um, uh, I, I'm very upset that the Swedish media is not reporting anything uh, that that should uh, show uh, that, that uh, there were a conspiracy behind the murder of Anna Lind and that Mikhailovich was not alone. And, and there are substantial research that he was not the guy who uh, stabbed her with the knife because uh, the man who stabbed her with the knife was very skilled in, in must have been skilled in medicine. It's a very, it's a, not a very... Uh 
typical weapon to use at assassinations, uh, using a knife. Yeah. And to, to be able to do that, you need to really know what to do. And uh, according to the doctors at Karolinska, they said that the, the man who committed this uh, horrific in, uh, attack was, he knew exactly what he was doing. He stabbed in the right places and he twisted the knives, yes. the knives in a way really to, to make uh, uh, maximum possible destruction inside. Uh, yes. So it was, if you see, uh, often if, it was, if it's an act of a madman, then you will often see that there's multiple stabs, you know, like maybe 15 or something like that. They're so yeah. angry, they will just stab, wop, 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 wop. Mm. Here we see totally different. Uh, it's a, he's very quiet. He's, he just attacks, doesn't say a word, but do, do, do in a very efficient way yes. and leaves, leaves right away. He walks away very he, like that. And it's first when people start uh, screaming and so that's when he starts... Uh, Running. Yes. So he he did it not in a typical madman way, but a yes. very controlled way, I would say. And, and people saw a lot of other guys, strange guys, in the surrounding before. Yeah, this is also typical that when you do a, a hit like this, uh, first, if I can just describe how the, how it's normally done. Yeah. Uh, you got you got different teams. You got one surveillance team that is uh, flown in. Uh, often like a couple of weeks before the hit itself. Uh, this team is backed up by Swedish, uh, no, local, wherever the, whatever country we're talking about, but local police or right-wing uh, security people, so on, with contact. Uh, they, are, they are the ones that supply them with weapons, vehicles, food, housing, and so on. And they yeah. often, uh, the surveillance team and the hit team as well, they're moved between different safe houses so that mm. no one will really know what is going on. This uh, surveillance team, they, what they do is they check out the victim and find out the best way and place to hit them and when to do it. Yeah. Okay. Once that is established, uh, the, while that is being established, uh, you're also being, a patsy is being prepared with evidence that will point exactly to him. Sometimes they will also go out through media and start pumping uh, you know, suspicious things about this group or person or whatever, so that uh, normal people's subconscious start saying, ooh, that is a strange group or a strange person or whatever. So they build this image up. Mm. And then uh, once it gets close to uh, the hit itself, uh, uh, the team of assassins is flown in, and very often they are flown in from different countries, different groups, different mm. backgrounds, so that there's no uh, clear connection points between them. Mm -hmm. of, often the people who do it, they don't even know the other people either. It's yeah. kept very, very com 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 uh, com compartmentalized. compartmentalized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so at the same time, there's an investigation put on standby. This investigation is built up of people who are very aware of uh, who the real hit. I mean, they are involved in it. Mm -hmm. And what they do is as soon as the person is hit or shot or whatever, this investigation pushes in and pushes all the normal, honest, decent policemen and investigators to the side so that the, it's their own investigation that is put forward. And their only task is to point all in every direction except for the real truth, which is pointing at themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, then after the hit itself, um, you can clearly see after one of these hits, one of the typical things is that the, the police work is delayed, delayed, delayed. Nothing yes. happens, or there are problems, or and this is done. The delay is done so that the hit team itself can uh, be sure to get away. And false traces, and yeah. False traces is also placed. It, it's being pumped out within minutes after it happens. Very often, there's an official expert that stands up and starts talking about it being a long crazy guy, or pointing at whoever they they aim as a patsy. And then after that, you have a, uh, a clear-up team. Once the hit team is out of the way, uh, while the, the public is being shocked and is trying to and following what is going on, all the cameras are aimed at the victim. Mm. And while they're doing that, they clear up the, the scene of the murder so that there's absolutely no evidence left that can point in their direction. And at the same time, they often put out evidence pointing at this patsy. Yes. 
So this is uh, what happened, and this is also what I feel strongly happened with Annalint, that there was a team of maybe five, six different people. Yes. Very often these are dressed in a similar way. They can often look similar. They, they are often like uh, people that look very closely to the Patsy so that they can uh, direct the, diverse, the dire attention diverse, yeah. mm -hmm. towards him. Yeah. And uh, also... Often they, they use uh, people in uniform, uh, sec uh, like security guards or mm -hmm. police or ambulance people or something like that. Because normal people, witnesses, they only see a police officer or a security guard or an ambulance driver. They don't see their faces. They mm -hmm. just see there was a police there. They're so so focused on finding looking at other stuff. Yes. So this is a typical ingredient as well. Yes. And in the Annalyn case, they said first uh, the, the, the perpetrator had a military jacket and long hair. And, and th then they showed video pictures from the guy who was convicted, Mikhailo Mikhailovich. He was, had totally other clothes <laughs> and yeah. not long hair. No, but this is also typical. That uh, one thing that always happens is that the surveillance cameras does not work. Exactly. Or if they work, the police are not interested. They would be mm. almost pushed in their face before they look at it. This is often like a, 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 at least 24 hours or two, three days afterwards, they, the police starts looking at it. I mean, a normal policeman who um, used to look at homicides and stuff, he would go straight for the cameras right away within minutes. Here it's totally different. Yeah, here it was in, in the second floor, but not the first floor where the murder was committed. And also the camera, we're not seeing video footage, we're seeing still still photos taken. That's right, yes. And also if you look at these still photos, especially I'm, I work a lot with Photoshop and, and if, uh, if you do a clumsy job, it's very easy for someone like myself to see that it's uh, manipulated because, yeah. well, it's not very well done. And I, when you, you enlarge the photos of the, uh, this guy that they claim did, you, yeah. can, you can see his sideburns Mm -hmm. are really added afterwards in a very clumsy way. Yes, yes. Yeah, this is very strange. And um, also afterwards, uh, you, you see in this case where evidence was added to his clothing. Uh, first it was found and there was nothing in his pocket. Then afterwards, uh, I think two days later, suddenly uh, things were found in the back pocket, uh, an election uh, thing for Anna Lind. And then they say, ah, that's why he went for Annalyn, that he got crazy. He saw his name and her name and, oh, no, stinks. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and uh, th th there was um, only on the knife from one part of her clothes, I think the jacket, and, uh, and at the caps, it was from the pullover she had. But it was, you would expect that at least at the caps or at the knife, it is from several clothes. So this is an indication that they mixed up uh, uh, the evidence afterwards. There's, it's like if it's only one thing, fine. Yeah. It could be a mistake, it could be a coincidence and so on. But when they start piling up one after one after one, and especially if you, like myself, have looked into so many other cases, yes, you see it's almost like a template. You will see, yeah. I know, it's like I, I can tell you if let's say there's a murder tomorrow, you call me and say there's been a, a political hit in, in Stockholm. Okay, I can tell you the details before you even describe <laughs> what had happened. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They they do it like, uh, and and this is uh, how it's done. And yes. they use it. They, they even use the same people for the different hits. You know, they fly them in in different countries fly them in, fly them out on diplomatic mm -hmm. passports and so and it's just, uh, I, I, I interviewed one guy once and, and I asked, but how, why, why did they even use the same people? And he said, why change a winning, uh, winning uh, team? team yeah. <laughs> you know, they're yeah. good, they're trustworthy, yes. they do what they're told, they're yes. highly disciplined. Yes. And then it was strange with Anna Lind uh, when she came uh, a little bit too late to the hospital. Um, they said from the hospital, uh, we will rescue her. Uh, it is uh, not a good situation, but uh, she will survive. 
and then uh, a half day later uh, she died and uh, the Swedish uh, television team made research that there were severe medical faults when they uh, gave new blood to her uh, so the suspicion arises especially when you have seen the press conference from this uh, Karolinska hospital which is giving the Nobel Prize for medicine every year uh, that, that, that there is a suspicion that they uh, helped to kill her uh, because the, the knife was not, or the several knives were not sufficient. Is once again, this is really macabre details to go into, and, and I, I really don't want to uh, insult the Lind family in any way. I can just say, if you compare it to other cases, again, that it happened, these things happen. The, the victim survives, the doctors are really good, and the, the doctors that are not involved. Uh, are, are really good and managed to save this guy and then suddenly the victim is suddenly moved to a different uh, hospital that is uh, for no apparent reason and he either he dies in the ambulance or they make a, diff a problem with a blood transfusion or there's complicate they call it complications unforeseen complications mm -hmm. happens and then the, the person dies this is again what, it, what happened here, and I feel, once again, if it was only that, I wouldn't react, but if I, since I've seen it so many times, this does not feel right either. Yes, I, I drew, uh, draw a parallel to the Princess Diana murder in Paris, where they did not pick the closest hospital, and, and there are and, very indications she was not so, so horribly uh, hurt. No, she had internal bleedings, but she was absolutely not fatally wounded, yeah. and... Uh, it took four, it, the, the nearest hospital was only a few kilometers from the tunnel. And the, the one they drove uh, her to was six kilometers uh, from the tunnel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not the closest one. But what happened was they delayed it 43 minutes to take her from, I mean, she, this is a celebrity, one of the most well-known women in the world. Don't you think they would put on the wee, 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 and sort of step on it to see if they could save her. Yeah. No, instead, they kept her in the, in, in the tunnel. She wasn't uh, trapped in any way. She, they could carry, get her out of the car right away. But instead, it took 43 minutes to get her to the hospital. Yes. And then, out of these uh, 43 minutes, five minutes was like they parked the, the ambulance just 500, uh, a few hundred meters from, from the emergency entrance. And they say they gave her whatever treatment. But mm -hmm. in any other case, the treatment is done while the ambulance is moving, not standing still. Yeah. And then when she finally arrived uh, at the hospital, she was too far gone. Yes. And also very important to see who was waiting for her in that hospital, yes. which was people from both the French and the and MI6, uh, these people that were already there in Paris. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it's horrible. Horrible. Once again, you have the cameras not working. Yes. All 14, I mean, it's standard, standard yes. procedure. Nothing works when it comes to normal. And concerning to David Icke's research, the driver, Henry Paul, he was under heavy mind control and he disappeared hours before. And nobody can tell where he was, where they probably programmed him. I don't know about that. Mm. I, as, as far as I. I know how the accident, a so-called accident, how the hit was done uh, and with a white Fiat and two people on a motorbike where they, they forced, they tried to force off uh, the car off uh, into, this tunnel was perfect because the pillars in the tunnel didn't have railings and they were uh, totally flat and 90 degrees against the, uh, the traffic that lots of people have died there before because it was an absolute death trap. And uh, when, while this uh, white fear was trying to, to uh, bump into it, to force it off the road, there was uh, a motorbike with two people on it, and one of the guy on the back had uh, like a, a very, very, very strong military uh, flashlight of, of shock light mm -hmm. that totally blinds uh, the driver. And this is uh, also who took the photos were from. It seems like the photos, the last photo was taken from uh, the motorbike or somebody in, in that position. And then after the crash itself, 
with a motorbike uh, stopped and one witness saw that one guy ran uh, up to the car and injected the driver in his neck uh, with some kind of thing. And also in the autopsy afterwards, you can see that the autopsy protocol shows that he was so, I mean, there was so, uh, so much poison uh, of different types in his body that he wouldn't have been able to even walk. Mm. So, and, and then you have the bodyguard who they say bit himself in the tongue so he couldn't talk and give it evidence or testimonial. Mm. I mean, in these cases, they always forget that a witness can also write down a testimony. But yeah. No, no. And and David Ike's research shows that it was an old Merovingian as a place for human sacrifice, the spot where she was murdered, the lady died, and uh, Anna Lind. They say uh, the, the, this warehouse uh, is on an old place where they made sacrifices in former times. So that that, that could also uh, fit very well. They they often do it in a ritualistic way. Yes. I, I don't understand the mentality of these people. They, the dates are often very picked picked on a with big accuracy. Yeah, nine eleven. Anna Lind was also nine eleven. Only yeah. two years later. You have Salvador Allende when they murdered him. That was 9/11. Oh. Then, uh, in <laughs> in '73, then you had uh, uh, when George Bush Senior, the first time he spoke openly about uh, the New World Order in the Congress, it was on exactly 10 day, 10 years on the day exact in 1991. Uh, and then you had 9/11, and then it just goes on and on. You have mm. many of the, these different hits are done on the same dates or uh, the absolute opposite date. Um, yeah. yeah. And then very often also they, they erect like a monument, uh, very often in the form of an obelisk, uh, within a hundred meters from where the hit was done. It's almost uh, for the decoration of the area, or the decoration of the park. I mean, it's only people who know about these things that will see yes. that they have a connection. Normal people just walk right by them. And they're like and torches. It, the, 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 in the Pont d'Armal tunnel, they have a torch up on yeah. the roof. Yeah, this is a Freemasonic symbol as well. Yes, and uh, Grassinol, uh, and, and even the Palme murder, they have the torches in, in the lanterns. Yeah, the, the t uh, in the Palme assassination, that was a typical one where they erased it uh, like uh, one year after, within one year after. And if you look at it, there's five of them. Uh, along Lundmark, yes. I wrote on. Mm -hmm. There's uh, two like an entrance and then two in uh, like uh, uh, asymmetric uh, shape. And then the last one is a very, st the position of that is very strange because that is exactly what if you stand on the site where it, like, the exact location where Palm was shot and look up towards the stairs where the murder disappeared, mm -hmm. you will see, you will see this obelisk and it's it's very, very odd, the position of it. It's, there's no uh, logic to it, there's no s symmetry, there's no decoration aspect to it. It's just right at where the assassin disappeared. Yes, and they were built uh, shortly after the Palme murder. They were built within a year. Yeah. yeah and if you look at Palme, you can see it, they say these uh, five l lots, uh, which is like the uh, the ignition on old weapons, Lunta, mm -hmm. these five Luntu was erected by, and then you can see also the, the, the companies, uh, some of the companies that were involved and wanted to get rid of Palm as well uh, were part of uh, erecting these. And on the, the, whole, the whole area around the Palm assassination is a very strange area once yeah. you get into it. Yeah. The, the exact corner of the house where it was shot was, it used to be. It was the Scandia insurance company, but also the headquarters for Stay Behind, uh, which, yes. well, I'm sure you, your listeners know about yes. Stay Behind. Mm -hmm. In Sweden they call it Ala Grüning. Yeah. Ala Grüning, Gladio, Stay Behind. Mm -hmm. And in Ground Zero uh, in New York, they have a light pillar in the night. They, they tried to, to erect an obelisk there. Uh -huh. and, you know, the, it was... They, they, this is the way they do it. They often say that okay, we have a, an art competition, and one of the one of the things that is being submitted to this uh, competition will always be some kind of obelisk. And this, the same thing here, 
with 9/11, they wanted to make this massive obelisk there, but it was it was got just got too obvious that it was. Uh, now they did it with lights instead. Yeah, and uh, the Swedish Prime Minister Joran Persson, who hoped that Anna Lind would be the next Prime Minister for Sweden because she was uh, the most skilled uh, for this position. He said uh, in an interview in television, uh, this murder on Anna Lind was an attack to the Swedish democracy. And there you go, that's true. Yeah. Not not the long crazy one. What he said there was the truth, yes. Yes, because th th this means he also understood uh, it, it was not a lonely nut, uh, Mikhail Mikhailovich. It must have been uh, much bigger forces. And it was also interesting when I started my web TV, uh, white TV, in uh, March 2011. One of my first interviews were with a, a guy who is, uh, has had problems with mind control. And we, we said, yes, uh, it is obvious that Mikhail Mikhailovich, the official killer from Anna Lind, was mind controlled. And shortly after that, uh, uh, he is, uh, said, uh, contacted the criminal police and then a Swedish newspaper, Expressen, made uh, some months later an interview with him where he recalled and said, no, I never heard voices, I just made it up to, to, to get it easier in the court that they say that I'm crazy and not uh, punished, sentenced to lifetime. And, and there, for me, I, I saw a reaction that, that now, when it is discussed, they go out and, and let him revoke it. Yeah, and I don't even, I'm not even sure if he was, if he actually said these things or yeah. if it was just this Maybe. journalist who, yeah. who made this up. Because yeah. it's very important also to understand that some journalists are being paid by what is called the psychological defense of Sweden. Yes. Uh, and one of their tasks, or their main task, is to divert. The, the attention of the public yes. for national security, what they call national security. Yes. Yes. And they are also very deep in, in, involved in the handling of the Estonia case, yes. how, how it's being pointed in a totally different direction. MS Estonia ferry boat, which was deliberately yeah. sunk on the 28th of September 1994. 94. 19 years ago now. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. And, and, and because of all of that, the Palmer murder, the daughter Anna Lind murder, and the Estonia ferry boat, uh, the United States uh, classed the Sweden as a high-risk country now when Obama was on the visit uh, in, in, in uh, last week. And this is absolute bullshit, if you ask me. Uh, but uh, what I feel that Sweden is being used for, it's being used as a test ground where the global elite are testing out different uh, aspects, especially mm -hmm. lately it's been the digital currency, uh, which is, in yes. my opinion, very, very dangerous. Yes. It's, it's very, very handy. I must say it's, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. You just have a credit card or, or whatever and you can do soup, soup, and that's it. But if you start to looking at the consequences, if you do not have bills or coins cash, in yeah. your hand, if you don't have cash anymore, then the one controlling the computer that controls your car hmm. is the one that is in total control of your life exactly. or your ability to buy or, or eat or, or pay someone else, you know. Hmm. So it is a, I, I cannot un, under-exaggerate the risk with... A, a total digital currency, and they are working very hard to to push this forward. And especially in, in Sweden, this is the test ground. Once it's, I mean, now I know my brother in Sweden who's working very hard for the truth as well, Chant uh, He he's been into Swedish banks, uh, and they say we don't accept the uh, cash anymore. Yes. And and it's, for me, being abroad, it's like. You must be joking. This is absolutely ridiculous. And then I speak to people in Sweden and say, oh, it's so good. It's so easy, you know, you don't have to worry about anything. It, but see the consequences. You have yeah. to open your eyes and see why this is being done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and also the, what they're planning is the microchipping of the population mm -hmm. and how they use it the, how now with Swedish passports being microchipped and you know, mobiles and credit cards, they're just getting closer and closer. Mm -hmm. Soon, if they haven't started already, you, you will be able to get microchips so you can 
get into the VIP lounge on nightclubs or yeah. whatever. It's really a cool thing to have a microchip so you don't even need your credit card. Yeah. This is going straight into this prison we're talking mm. about. It's yeah. not a place to go. Yeah, Sweden is very harshly suppressed in that way. It's a, a real a pity, and uh, I I say always uh, Sweden is controlled by Mossad because Mossad is involved in the Palme murder, the MS Estonia uh, sinking, and the Anna Lind murder. I think it's even I think it's a mistake to see uh, this global elite as specific countries. I mean, this is a group that has taken over. They they don't see it as as uh, different countries anymore, but it's it's like a franchise and it's a national yeah. business. And so to say that Mossad did that or the CIA or SEPA did that, it's a mistake because they work together, not down on the street level, but on the highest top. All of these are connected, BOSS and SEPA and CIA and NSA and yeah, yeah. all of them working together. So it's just a matter of, okay, in this country, we're going to hit like this, who are we going to use? We're going to use them. We didn't use those in the other place, so let's use them so they don't get recognized. And uh, my, my research shows that uh, there is a, a pyramid structure of power in the secret services. On the top of the pyramid is the Mossad, the little Mossad. And then it's MI6, MI5 from Great Britain. Then on the next level, equal Russia and, 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 and the United States and lower the other countries. And uh, man, you must not make the mistake to think it, that Israel is behind uh, Mossad. This is only a false flag. It's the yeah. bank house Rothschild being yeah. behind as the Rockefellers are being behind the CIA, for example, and then the, 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 the house, the royal house in, in, in Great Britain is behind MI6 and MI5. It's the Queen and her husband. It's all integrated, I would say. Yes. It's, uh, it used to be separated, but they worked so hard for a long, long time to centralize power yes. on all different levels. Yes. I mean, not, now it's even... Uh, its media is so controlled by the same people you just yeah. spoke about, same the forces. music business, TV, you name it, mm -hmm. they're there. So we are at a time where it's really, there's no time to, to waste. It's time to wake up now yeah. or, or they will close the door around us. So it's, it's, it's a wake, wakey, wakey time, big, big yeah. wake up call. You want finally add uh, some comment on the murder of Anna Lind, the, the late uh, Swedish Secretary of State? I just think uh, if I speak to the people who did it or the people behind it, I think it's such a cowardly way of doing things. I think shame on you, absolutely, to, to do a thing like this uh, to a woman with children, a family, absolute disgrace absolute disgrace and uh, it's time to stop the madness it's time the way the world is waking up now yeah and big time and i can if i can address people in uniform the uh, police i'm not talking so much in so much in sweden but internationally police and soldiers in uniform and security people to wake up educate yourself see whose interest it is you are working for Mm. You you think you are supporting, you are, you are defending freedom, you think you are defending normal people and so on. It is the other way around. You are the one protecting the elite that is pushing this awful agenda on the rest of the world. Yes. And there is no, absolute no honor in doing that. Absolute, and there are no excuses. doesn't matter if you were given an order or whatever. There is no excuse for it. And it's time to let it go. It's time to stop the madness. Mm. And the sooner you do it, the better. Yes. And also, please understand, who, you who work or are in uniform, that the people using you are bankers with the, the, the whole thing is greed. Greed that is leading to total destruction and death to so many people. Mm. And that they have and no nations. lawyer. Yeah. They have no loyalty to you. Mm. You think that you're maybe a sergeant or a, a colonel or whatever. The soon, as soon as you don't serve their interest, you're out. You're just empty uniforms for them. Mm. So wake up and see where your real loyalty is and 
step aside, I would say. Yes, and make a research to whom your master is loyal. This is what I'm exactly what I'm saying. See what is going on because you are being used, mm -hmm. and and this thing with the UN troops going out and or NATO troops going out and for fight for freedom, it's absolute bollocks. Mm -hmm. You're used as a powerful enforcer to rape and plunder and control, and it's time to stop it. It yes. is time to stop it. Yes. Thank you very much for your courage, Ole Damagot, that you discussed these um, uh, difficult topics and, and, and uh, I know you are putting your ass on the line with that uh, because... It takes one to know one. It is... Uh, oh, look to Michael Hastings and others. Uh, uh, it is quickly that, that journalists get killed if they are coming too close to the truth. Thank you very much, Ole. And please let us know now your website and uh, w w perhaps where we could give a donation to you. It's very kind. Donation are extremely appreciated. Uh, my website is uh, www.lightonconspiracies.com. Light. L I G H T light on conspiracies dot com, and there you can uh, you can buy my book Coup de Time Slow Motion. It's in Swedish as well. Stats Coup e Slow Motion, which is exactly what I think happened with the Swedish Prime Minister. It was not just an assassination; it was a coup d'état in slow motion. Mm -hmm. And the people who committed it are still in power. They took over, and yes. they are in power now, driving this beautiful country in a very negative direction. And you even look into the MS Estonia sinking, mass murder, and in Anna Lind's murder. Yeah, yeah, and I would say I would also, uh, I'm working very hard on connecting uh, the, MS, the sinking of MS Estonia because I think that the reason why she was actually sunk is connected to the pound assassination. Oh, I agree, yes, I agree. So... So it's it's a trauma that needs to be healed. Yes. And also, I I just want to say to the people who I can understand, people in power and and people who have committed different uh, horrible acts that they are afraid, that they think that uh, normal people will will be so furious and angry with them if they come forward and 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 openly talk about what's going on and what they've been doing. But the sooner the The, the sooner this happens, the sooner people start having the courage enough to stand up and stand up for what is right and beautiful and wonderful in life instead of supporting this destructive cancer which is killing Mother Earth and, and the population, mm -hmm. the better. And we will embrace, we will embrace people who, who have the courage to stand up. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ole Damago. Thank you, Henning. Bye.